Okay, it works. Wait for Mark to get to the position. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. First, I want to welcome you all to the new and improved South Steps. This is the first uh, press conference been done here since I've repainted everything. And um, I'm here for good and bad reasons to a degree. For over three years now, we have had people lying about our elections in Georgia. We have now begun to see the accountability of that take place. So yesterday afternoon, we received our first restitution check from Sidney Powell. It's a small down payment on what should be owed to the voters and the people of Georgia. It's $2,700. But the lies that she perpetrated in behalf of an overall greater lie has undermined people's faith in our systems and in our country and in their fellow Americans. It was wrong then. The tides that have come from that have continued to damage families and election workers and Georgians and Americans. We're at a point where the, there needs to be accountability across the board. Georgia does a fantastic job running elections. We are voted number two by Heritage Foundation in election integrity. We're tied for Colorado in election administration by the Bipartisan Policy Center. Our laws are secure. The 2020 election was the most secure election in American history. The 2022 election was more secure than that. And the 2024 election is going to be even more secure than that. And let me tell you some of the things that the Secretary has done to already achieve these goals. Um, just today, the final inspection was done by the Department of Homeland Security in conjunction with the Georgia Emergency Management Agency of every location that holds our physical equipment. That's done today. We're expecting a report on that very soon. There have been 77 completed health checks in counties around Georgia of 159. There's three that are underway right now going to 80. We have launched a brand new voter registration system, which on the series of threats is much higher than any individual BMD or machine. Jarvis has been a success so far. We are running elections in 122 counties as we speak. We are piloting a new version of our software for the Dominion voting system 5.17 in five counties. So far, that elections, those elections are going very smoothly. There are, like I said, 122 counties conducting elections on state equipment right now, in which we have nearly 100,000 new voters have, having cast ballots. We have launched new poll pads. The new poll pads add another layer of security because we keep everything on what is called ePulse, a separate cloud-based system than having to have 2,000 individuals around the state log in directly into our voter registration system. This office and this legislature and this governor are investing and doing every single day the necessary work to keep our elections secure. This check, if you didn't believe the three recounts, if you didn't believe the investigations, if you didn't believe the court cases, this check shows you, she says, yes, I lied. Some of other co-conspirators have also admitted they lied. They probably did it for purposes they thought were gallant and noble, fighting for the values and causes they believe in, but you have to follow the law. This office is about following the law, doing the right thing, investing properly. We take security very seriously. We are taking the responsible steps to keep our elections secure. There are going to be those who oppose the steps that we take, and they want to see failure. Election deniers have been cast out by the voters of Georgia. We saw it with Stacey Abrams. We saw it with Donald Trump supported candidates. We saw people who said the election was stolen in the 2022 primary. They lost. The voters of Georgia rejected them. We need to move on to have elections not about stolen elections. They need to be about the values you want to fight for. Disagree with it. Have your fights over those things. We have to have a politics based in truth and accountability. This is step one. It's a small step. The, the damage that was done is incalculable. You can't put in a monetary figure on it, but this is at least a start. So I want to go over all those specific things that the Secretary's office is doing every day. In fact, today the Secretary is in South Georgia visiting two different elections offices in Doherty County and Thomas County and going, seeing, making sure they have what they need. We work closely with our counties. And this is another thing. It's a vindication for those, not just the elections workers in Georgia, not just Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, but the thousands of election workers around Georgia and the tens and hundreds of thousands of election workers around this country. I've talked to people around this country, elections workers. Their lives have been turned upside down. They've received death threats. Their families have been turned upside down. One of the big things about this is Thanksgiving is coming up. 
there are families that have a hard time getting together now based on this lie. And that's what it is. At some point earlier on, you could have said, yes, I have questions. At this point, the questions are answered. The courts are spoken. This restitution check is a small part of that, but it's an important part of it because it's real and it's tangible. And this money will be invested in further election security. So with that, I'll take any questions. And I'll be a whole lot, but go ahead, Justin. It's the same thing we've been saying since we got there. State law requires it to be EAC certified. The EAC certification came in March of 2023. We wanted to look at doing it quickly, potentially, but it's very, very difficult given the fact we have to run elections, like I said, in 122 counties right now. It takes tens of thousands of man hours to do this. And also, it's never been tested. We are following the plan we laid out in April which basically said we're going to pilot it in a certain number of municipal elections. We couldn't know where we could pilot it until we did uh, qualifying in August. And then once you had that, then we decided on the five counties to put it into. So we're piloting it right now. So far, it looks really good. There may be a few things, but I'm not ready to say that yet because we haven't had a full election day on it. We've only had early voting on it right now. But so far, it looks solid. But then, as soon as we're done with that, we have runoffs in December. Then we are already starting to build the ballots for the presidential preference primary, which will be held March 12th. And then after that, we go qualifying for the general election is going to be in March, which means we're building those elections at that point. Building ballots is a difficult thing. There's over 9,000 ballot styles in the state. In a, in a primary election, there's over 18,000 ballot styles. And depending on if there's judge races, there's even more with the nonpartisan. You get up to 27,000 ballot styles, potentially. So it's not an easy thing to do. We're taking the methodical, responsible way because the risks outlined in the CISA report and in Alex's report are hypothetical scenarios that really can't work in a real-world environment. That's just the simple fact of it. The real things we've been investing our time in is real election security around a new voter registration system, around launching new poll pads. Those are real security things we've been investing our time and effort into. The next thing that's most important to keep the elections running is the um, uh, uninterrupted power supplies that was partially funded at one point in the budgets in the, from the last session, ended up going to $2 million in bond money to pay for part of the new batteries and the backup power supplies for the BMDs because you need the system to actually function. And unfortunately, OPB came back and said, Office of Planning Budget, we couldn't use those dollars for that purpose. So the next big investment we need to have, and we have in our current ask with both the House and Senate appropriators and the Office of Planning and Budget, is about $6 million to replace those un uninterrupted power supplies. That's the biggest single thing we have to worry about right now. Yes, sir. That's the problem was solved well in time for us to use our pilots. So that's, that has that issue been taken care of. We have certified it for the pilot usage. Yes, sir. Well, no, we, we, the plan right now is to start in either December of 24 or January of 25, because there is an open window at that point to be able to do it m more judiciously and more carefully. The issue we've had is the law says it has to be EAC certified. This is, the, I believe, the first EAC certified version since that, other than fi other 5.5s, which, which were state-specific, the B and Cs, so that didn't really apply to stuff we were trying to do here. This is the first one that moved on past that. Yeah, Mark. I think he's, it's been a long planned thing, the rotary speech, and he's also visiting those locations. I think they've already done the health check in Doherty. I'm not sure. I can get you those records real quick. Yes, sir. Well, I think since his co-defendants have already said that they lied about many of these things, that's one thing. The recounts have proved the, vote, the machines did not flip any votes. There's been no, all the evidence across the board, 
everywhere in the United States has shown this was the outcome of the election was correct. There's been no evidence showing otherwise. That's what I would say to them. Um, well, we had a we had a count, then we had a hand tally, and that was in a normal hand tally, you'd be off between one to two percent according to academic studies. We were off by 0.1053 percent in the overall ballots cast and 0.0099 percent in the margin. So that's basically dead on accurate, showing the machines counted the ballots as presented. There's been no evidence anywhere showing that that, that wasn't done that way. All right. Thanks, guys.